Thank you, Michael, and uh, welcome everybody. Um, going back through and re reviewing the Louisiana Monroe game, uh, just as I said after the game, was uh, really just very pleased that we played um, the way we're capable of uh, without without foolish penalties, taking care of the football, uh, with without very few mental errors, those kind of things really played in a, in a pretty sound way. Um, I thought offensively, uh, Baker was excellent, uh, very decisive, getting the ball out quick. And I uh, thought a lot of receivers all, all really played well. A lot of guys made plays, made big, big plays, and uh, were, were consistent catching the ball uh, and, uh, and executing. So that was also good. Thought our running backs really played well. Offensive line was good. And, uh, you know, so we had the, good, the balance that you like to have and, and really, I, th I thought, had a good day. The, the two players of the game were uh, uh, Baker Mayfield and Dimitri Flowers. Uh, Dimitri really had an excellent game, and that was a, a big help as well. Uh, defensively, very solid. Uh, we're very good, uh, again, against the run. Limited, uh, really, uh, the execution overall with the whole first group was really solid, really good. I uh, had two breakdowns in the second half that uh, one uh, safety checked something that he shouldn't have and the other a corner just didn't um, you know get to the position he needed to on some basic coverage but other than that uh, everybody was really good in the way they played players of the game uh, were Jordan Evans and Obo uh, Obanaya Okoronkwo had another excellent game so those two guys were the players of the game and uh, but again, very solid kicking game. Uh, uh, Austin was really good uh, the way he hit the ball. So really solid, and, and was I realized the level of competition isn't what we're used to playing. But uh, I like the fact that we took care of things that we could control and, and uh, played in a better fashion that way. On to this week, uh, big week with Ohio State here coming uh, coming to town. Uh, an excellent football team uh, that everybody knows. Uh, uh, Coach Urban Meyer and his staff do a, do a great job, great tradition, uh, really exciting week uh, for everybody. Uh, there are some key guys, you know, of course, offensively, everything goes through JT Barrett, an exceptional athlete at quarterback, throwing the football really well to a lot of, a lot of excellent players. Uh, Curtis Samuel, number four, is a guy that first comes to mind in the way he so many different ways they, they get him the football and, and uh, electrifying guy and the way he can run. Uh, got an excellent running back in Weber as well. Uh, and Wilson, another uh, great athlete that they put it wide out and uh, can play in the backfield as well. So uh, talented guys uh, around all of them. Uh, defensively, uh, same thing, very sound. Haven't given up a touchdown yet this, uh, this year. Um, uh, very, very good. Uh, uh, defense, four-man front. Uh, most of the time, they'll get into some of the, some of the three-man front, but mostly four-man front. Uh, with with uh, a lot of good players. Love their middle linebacker McMillan. Great, great player, and really like uh, love their uh, free safety hooker. Is a great, great athlete back there. Covers a ton of ground. Already has three interceptions. So uh, really, really good player. But. Uh, Anyway, I know it's uh, it'll be a big challenge, guys. Are yeah, of course everybody here is excited about it. I know the fans are, and uh, it'll be it'll be a great week to get ready for, and we got to enjoy the competition. What's your injury situation? Injuries. Um, let's see. Uh, not uh, everything is checked out. DJ Ward checked out uh, well. Uh, should be. Just depends on when he's back to practice this week, but he should be okay. Uh, same with uh, Tay Evans, uh, just had a minor bruise uh, on his hip, but he's he checked out okay. Uh, Charles seemed to be better yesterday. Charles Walker was better yesterday, so that's encouraging. Should be back sometime here this week. Alex Dalton? Uh, Alex is okay. Uh, Daniel Brooks may be out. Uh, uh, we'll see how he goes here through the week. What does playing a game like this do for your program? Some programs don't play games like this, but what does it do for you? Uh, well, when you when you play these games and win them, it gives you a boost. You know, they're they're exciting for everybody. Uh, you know, they're they're challenging in the, the you know the great competition that you're going against. But you know, they can they can give you a lift when you 
you know, when you win and, and uh, you know, they force you to, to really, you know, have a great week of practice to make improvement, especially early in the year here. So uh, everyone realizes the, you know, the challenge of it all. Bob, in the game on Saturday, the corner opposite Jordan Thomas, did it become clearer for you what you can do in the we'll future? We'll see. Those guys all played better, um, you know, outside of the one play, and and that's more of a mental error than anything. But, um, you know, all of those guys, you know, played in a better way this past week. So we'll we'll work on that this week and see who it is. Could you possibly play multiple guys again? I mean, possibly. Mix and return punch. Uh, Joe uh, can return punts and, um, you know, and possibly will this week. How Bob, tough is it, Bob? In some ways you got to work to motivate a team throughout the week. Is it, do you kind of have to tamper down emotions during a week on a week like this? I don't know if you have to tamper down emotions, but you have to, you definitely have to concentrate on what really matters. And that's, you know, and that's the work you do on the field and the film room and those kind of things and you know and ignore the rest of it you know pay attention to what makes you you know perform at your best and and that's what we'll emphasize how close is michael jones being to being where you're just comfortable with putting him out there at any time uh, much closer um played played well the other day um you know showed you know showed a lot of good things had one mental mistake but um you know but he's he's getting closer Cornerbacks rotate this week. We'll see. It's only Monday. We don't know yet. How tough is it, Bob, when you had things you displeased with in Houston Saturday night? More pleased, but as you said, the competition level is so different. How can you have a good grasp on exactly what what kind of improvement you made? Uh, it's really simple. You know, regardless of who you play, you can rough the quarterback. And give people, you know, you, instead of being out of a series, give them give them a series that leads to points. We had multiple opportunities to rough their quarterback the other night, and we didn't do that. Um, we kicked our, our all our balls without starting and stopping and starting again, the the way we do all the time, and and uh, and hit them solidly. So uh, we, you know, those are those are just some examples of. You know what I'm talking about. Um, fewer mental errors overall. So, uh, sorry. go ahead. The players uh, said in response to my question that the atmosphere here Saturday was loud. Fans were involved. You know, the stadium being renovated and reconfigured. How did you see that? Uh, it seemed great. Uh, I, I, I be honest. I, I kind of paid attention when I took the field and you know waiting for the coin toss. Looked around and. <laughs> Thought it looked great and seemed like, you know, what, what you can tell that everybody was having fun up there. And then I didn't look at it again until I took the field on the second half, probably only because we were up 42 to zero or I wouldn't have looked up again. So, you know, I, I just, I'm watching the, the field and the pieces moving around and, you know, but it seemed like everybody enjoyed it and not what I, from what I heard and, and it seemed louder, yeah. you know, for, Especially a game, you know, that that's out of hand early, but it it seemed to be, you know, make it have have an effect You're with noise. You're involved in the communication process uh, as a coach. When your fans are louder, you can tell. Um, say you're trying to talk to your defense, uh, you can tell if your fans are louder. And, and oh, does definitely. it impact how you do things? It doesn't. You know, you, you it doesn't really impact. It can impact how you're you know, receiving the snap and things like that when you're on, when, when it's loud and, and it can affect, you know, how you're communicating with players and coaches when it's, when it's that loud. I mean, it, you know, you, sometimes you just have to put your headsets back on to have a conversation, you know, but, but anyway, it's, um, you know, it definitely creates and has an effect on the other team. Now you, in 2008, you famously asked the fans to come out and get loud. And I, I guess now, you did. Probably not in the correct way, but I, I did. <laughs> I challenged them yeah. to, to, to have an effect on the game, and then they did. They sure did, and everybody still shows that jump around video of, you know, of our ruckus crowd. So hopefully we can give them something to cheer about and and uh, have the same kind of atmosphere. Bob, you, you don't said, typically do that. Did. You you did it again in 2012 when uh, Notre Dame came here. Um, is this something that you want? I I, I, want? I haven't. I don't recall doing anything for Notre Dame. <laughs> The only one I recall is is making a poor statement in 2008. Yeah, 
I guess I'm thinking about more of a hey, we want the fans to be loud. You probably say that up anytime. But I Ohio say it State probably more it than, out, right? Yeah, it's it's you know it's been said a lot with with whatever other nice games we've had here. Bob, they only returned six players, but when you turn on the film, can you just see immediately that this team is, is a really special team? Yeah, you see excellent players. I mean, you know they they've got they've got good you know good players at at every spot and and. Uh, you know they're coached well, which is obvious, and and uh, and you see the the athleticism, you know the speed everywhere. Bob, you played. Bobby Evans got his first start at right tackle. How did that go with you and Samia inside? Yeah, it went well. Uh, Bobby did a nice job uh, there, and um, you know, and Drew um, is doing well inside. I believe he'll get better. I, you know, there's a little bit of an adjustment in there, um, you know, but he's a had a really good game again, and um, you know, but he's a guy that, you know, that'll keep getting better in there. But that combination seemed to, you know, play well for us. Gallimore seemed to have a really good game Saturday. Does that kind of move him up in that rotation along the line? Yeah, Neville uh, did play well and uh, continues to get better. So that gives you more confidence to keep playing him more snaps. So, so yeah, you know, he'll. We like what he's doing, so he'll he'll definitely you know be getting more and more playing time. Caleb Kelly. Caleb played well. He and Capri both did a did a really good job out there, uh, you know, in that Sam position and and like what they did. Will Johnson back this week? He he is back. Is the uh, offensive should line be back? I, I shouldn't say yet, but he'll in low likelihood he will be. Is the offensive line set then? Is that the way you'll enter this game? <sighs> uh, that's it'll be up to Coach Bedenboe, but he he generally you know sees how guys are working through the week, and and I'm sure we'll decide that later in the week. Earlier this summer came out Ohio State and Oklahoma the top two programs in the AP according to their the rankings. When you play games like this, what's it do for college football? And you have two mega programs facing off against each other. How what's that do for college? Well, football? I think it's exciting, uh, you know, for for college football fans, even even that aren't Oklahoma and Ohio State fans. Everybody likes to see these kind of uh, matchups, and and uh, you know, they're exciting for everybody, really. Did you grow up watching Ohio State football? And also, how iconic was Woody Hayes during that time when you were growing up in Ohio? Yeah, I grew up watching Ohio State football. I, I can't say that we were, you know, Buckeye fans. Uh, everyone, of course, you watched them and paid attention, and and of course, everybody was, you know, knew of and and loved Woody Hayes, you know, and his his legend and uh, loved his teams, and you know, they were he had he had great teams, you know, great players and. Yeah, so bu building that tradition for for such a long time, you know. So when you're in Ohio, you know of it for sure. You, you know of, of Dean helping winning the game, Bob. You would have been a junior in well, high school. Well, well, Did you well, know of Dean help winning that game? Did you see him? Yeah, I, I've seen that plenty of times. Okay. Yeah, talked about it hundreds of times. You know, I, sh I should have. <laughs> we should have showed it yeah, a little bit. I'm sorry, you were. No, that's okay. Um, I'm I'm staying on the, that game as well. Seventy-seven game. You would have been a what? A junior in high school. 17, uh, so I would have been a senior. I, I was a young, I went to Iowa at 17. So I was. So, uh, recollections of the game? Did you watch it? It was. Can't really remember. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I, uh, you know, I don't remember seeing it, to be honest. I've seen it so many times, I feel like I saw it, but no, I can't say that I, where I was when I was watching it, I can't. Puma told me that you told him last year, hey, we're bringing you on the plane. Still part of the plan? Uh, yeah, next, well, next year, next year yeah. Uva goes with us, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, if he'll behave, we'll see. <laughs> uh, you being an Ohio guy, is this, you have to like hide your cell phone a little bit more this week? Or? You know, I, I don't. I, my gr Graciously, my family said, I asked, uh, you know, in the summer, I said, who's all coming? I want to get this taken care of early, and none of them are coming. So, uh, they said you you have enough you're going to have to deal with. We're not going to not going to bother you. So uh, that's a loving family when they're going to give up coming to this game to let you do your work. And and I, although I got a few nieces and nephews coming, they did, they're not they're not quite as concerned about me. Uh, what, did Ohio <laughs> State, what did Ohio State football mean to you growing up and as say a high schooler? Oh, it was you know they were iconic they were like oklahoma ohio state you know all the you know the ones that traditionally have that 
tradition that goes back whatever 50 60 years you know um, you know they were always one of the elite teams that you you paid attention to and followed and and uh, you know watched when you could you know everyone wasn't on all the time so you always thought it was a treat when one of those type of schools was on and you get you got to see them seems like you and Urban Meyer have a mutual respect what makes him a good coach what uh, what makes Urban a good coach? I haven't coached with him, but I can only imagine, um, you know, just because of all the success, you know, the attention to detail, relating to players, relating to coaches, um, you know, motivating, you know, coaches, players, all of it together, you know, when you've had all that success, you know, go hand in hand. So attention to detail, those kind of things. A few years ago after he, after he left Florida, I understand you were a guy he met with to talk about maybe balancing life and football do you remember that or well we talked on? but you know I, yeah I'm not, that wouldn't be for me to speak on you know if but uh, you know I I feel I've been comfortable with the overall with the balance of my life and in the way I've gone about it and and so but you know urban urban has a great family and a, you know he's done a super job everywhere he's been so um, and, and he's a good guy you know when you when you visit with them did you um, recommend that book to you, Lead for God's Sake, by Todd Gongwer? I got I, I passed that book out to my staff when it first came out. I read it. I don't know who sent it to me. I'll have to read up, uh, read the cover again. But I, I I read it when I got it, and uh, and I got copies for all my staff. Bob, uh, Ashtabula is what a uh, hour from north of uh, About, Youngstown. Yeah. Up on the lake. Yeah, you uh, used to vacation up there. Oh yeah, any uh, stories? Mm, a lot, but <laughs> can't can't divulge all of them. Um, of the five active head coaches who have won national championships, three of them are from the state of Ohio. What is it about that area that uh, that we see? I mean, we, we've heard the cradle of coaches and all that, but this is a great matchup between two Ohio guys that um, probably ought to highlight. Probably, uh, I, I would say, you know, football has always been, you know, important there. Um, there's and, and I think it, it goes back to all the great high school coaches in the area. Uh, not only head high school coaches, assistant high school coaches, where uh, there, there's so many of them, uh, you know, that I believe, you know, that are quality coaches, do it the right way innovative you know and and uh so i, I just think and, and you know and it's football has always been uh, you know so strong there and uh population base uh, is very large a lot of big cities you know that uh that all have quality football programs Bob, you were disappointed that mike and i'm sure the other coaches were in the first game not winning many competitive plays is how you guys talked about it did did you have enough competitive plays the other night was that in, well was, we was had there? some there's probably not as many as you're going to have but you know you've got to be able to make those plays so we're you know that's what practice is all about and and uh you know did that's you what we'll keep the working. other night in that regard yeah, or could yeah but again the, the competition's going to be different but but still you know they're like i said when you, you still make plays that you're capable of making it's always a positive when you when you've had big bowl games in the past, you've always had former players. You know some of your best players show up to practice. And Obo was telling us how Charles Walker and Dominic Alexander, and Zach Sanchez reached out to him after the Houston loss. How how important is that for your program to have those guys that come back that, that let your team know now that they want to you know have them to be successful and talk yeah, to it, them about a program. You know it it matters. Those guys. Um, you know, especially when they know each other, you know, it, it, it's uh, always encouraging, you know, when you have fellow guys that, you know, care about you or paying attention to what you're doing and appreciate what you're doing and, uh, you know, and motivate and encourage you, you know. So it's, it's always positive and, and uh, you know, and our guys really do a pretty good job of it. Did you know the rule that no one in Stillwater knew Saturday? You know, I, I don't want to say that I knew the rule, but we um, it's it's unfortunate. It's like I said on on uh, my uh, show that the very first pass that Louisiana Monroe threw the other night, we had about a five ten minute review whether it was complete or not, and we can't review take ten or fifteen minutes to review whether they should have another down or not. It just 
doesn't seem, you know, fathomable that that happened, you know. Uh, uh, but we, I don't, we we run the same play, so I I I, I don't want to. I'm not disagreeing with Mike, but I I thought it was a good call what he did, and when we do it, we we run a receiver down the you know down the boundary and and try and do the same thing, but you know. Bottom line is, you know, it's the right thing to do, and uh, when ruled correctly. All after Saturday, Mark became the fastest two ten touchdowns in school history. What do you, or do you have any thoughts about that? Just kind of what that says about him. Uh, Mark, um, he, you know, he's an excellent player. Um, you know, he's an unusual matchup. You know, a and a great route runner, great hands. So, um, you know, and our. Offensive guys of you know, Coach Riley has done a great job of finding you know big plays for him. What does that do for the rest of the offense when the defense has to deal with a six-five, two hundred and fifty-pound guy that can beat you down the field? Well, it's it's um, you know it, it, you just pay attention to how you're matching up with them. You know, can the linebacker run with them? You know, depending on how deep it is, can the, can a safety you know match up with the size? Or is just always kind of looking at those kind of things. On the other side, is, is Curtis Samuel a guy that you have to pay particular attention to in that way? Absolutely. He, he's uh, They play him everywhere and, you know, exceptional speed and quickness. So, um, you know, definitely a guy you have to know where he is all the time. How similar are Houston and Ohio State's style of offense, and does it benefit you this week? Uh, they're, they're, they're similar. You know, they have, a, they have a lot of similarities, of course. You know, each will do a few things a little bit different. But ov overall, there's a lot of – there's a lot of carryover. And does that benefit you? Well, it, it does. That you've you've practiced against it, you know, quite a bit, and now you got a chance to make, hopefully, make some adjustments from it as well. You and Urban both have a lot of former assistants that are now head coaches. Is that something you measure yourself on? No. Um, you know, we we both have had a lot of former assistants go on to head coaches. I don't know that I'm measuring myself on that. I'm. I think we'd both just say that we're we're always glad and and and. Happy for those coaches and families that get a chance to go do it. You know that that you know you're you're always pay attention and proud when they do well. So you um, you know, but I don't I don't not sitting here measuring myself with it. You talked about the offenses being similar, but how beneficial is it to have specifically gone against Ward in the Houston game, and now you're dealing with another guy, dual threat type guy. Yeah, there, again, there's 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 some. Um, advantage there that we, we've dealt with a guy similar and you can try and tweak and adjust some things that maybe you thought you could have done better uh, the other side of that is they got to see how you want to play it you know so they get to do make their adjustments as well Bob, would you think that uh, in the off season that there would be communication between staffs would it be natural for Houston with that coat with the former Ohio State coach oh, and absolutely. The State? sure and I'm sure there's been conversations this week and last week. So, yeah, yeah that's that's only in the off season. Yeah. Sure, sure. Just like we we relate in conversations with a lot of people as well, you know, in in the in in the off season. Did you ever go to a game in Columbus, Bob? Before you got to Iowa City? No. Uh, we the first time you were there, you played. Well, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Do you remember about that? Oh, don't don't make me. <laughs> Didn't go real well, so I'd prefer not to. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, my dad being a high school coach, we were he, he was you know games Friday and sometimes Saturday I think even back then and and then uh, so we, we we didn't really go you know to games. Joe's had some some really good games the last couple of weeks. Are you going to try to get him more involved in the offense, Joe Mixon? Joe, uh, yeah, more involved. I don't know. We're trying. He's he's involved about as much as he's able to. Uh, so he has been excellent. Uh, Joe's been great. Uh, very well could have been a, a player of the game this week as well. You know, uh, just uh, catching the ball, running everything. He's been he's really been good. Going forward, as he uh, <clears throat> you know becomes bigger and bigger, what's going to be your policy on letting us talk to him? Yeah, it's something we've we've talked about, and um, I've talked about with the administration, and and we're working on that. So so there's a possibility. Bob, is he, he he looks a natural catching punts? I mean, that was the first time back. Is there any hesitancy about putting him 
out against uh, Ohio State after not uh, catching it? Not really. Uh, not really. And, uh, you know, there's a possibility that can happen. Well, you look I think Ohio. Dean's trying to encourage me to do it, I think. Dean, you don't need to encourage me too much, do, believe me. I'm, I see question, it, too. My, my question, though, was really more, he looks unnatural back there, the way he fielded punts. And I just wondered what you had seen from him. Uh, he is. He, he, he does, and he is natural doing it. What's, what's the one thing or a couple things that worries you about Ohio State that you've got to take away or you want to take away? Well, you, you, several, you know. Um, they're, again, starts with their quarterback. Uh, they do a great job. Uh, the balance, being able to run uh, and throw. Uh, their their uh, quickness on the outside. Uh, defensively, uh, same thing. Their their uh, you know their strength uh, up up front, uh, quick in the secondary. So, that enough for you? I'll take more. Diamond and Roberts playing Saturday. Yes. Did you, did you hold them out week two just because of that? the two uh, the nature just, of, the, of the competition the first two weeks? That's not f to be discussed. It's just how it worked out with the administration and us through a year-long process. In high school, did you ever think about playing for Ohio State? At high school, did I ever think about playing at Ohio State? Uh, would have loved to have, but uh, wasn't recruited at Ohio State. and. And uh, was very fortunate to, to go to Iowa. So I've always felt blessed that I had that opportunity because it really worked out great for not only myself, but my whole, my, my brothers as well. Who'd you root for growing up? You said you weren't big Ohio State people growing up. Who were, who were you? You know, I, I had a cousin, Eddie Moore, who played at Michigan. And I kind of remember, you know, uh, just following Michigan a little bit more because I was at a young age when I started to pay attention and, and, and I had a distant cousin that played at Michigan and uh, but really wasn't a Michigan fan. I'm just saying I maybe followed them a little bit more because of that and I, I w just wasn't a fan really of any particular team, you know, just uh, uh, in our house it wasn't that way. My father wasn't one that followed any one particular team and and so you know, it's kind of split between Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan, and I told you, I mean, I always loved Oklahoma. Not that I, you know, I, I was every bit of an Oklahoma fan as following any of them that were those other schools that were close that everybody followed back in our area uh, just because of the style of play, you know, Coach Switzer and how they won and, and the exciting, you know, watching what was more fun than watching the wishbone, wish, wishbone you know team to drop it seven times on the ground and still win by 50, you know. <laughs> so, and, you know, all the great running backs. I tell, remember watching Joe, of course, Washington. and But, I mean, I vividly remember Greg Pruitt, Steve Owens, all those guys, you know, was, they, were, they were fun to watch. Do you feel, sorry, do you feel nostalgic at all? <clears throat> this isn't a great question, but, but for that period of time, the whole country watched the same two games. It was this shared experience. I mean, you're not a spectator now, clearly. You're, you're in the middle of it. But do you miss it? Now the whole country can watch 15 games yes. while they're... Right, there's no shared experience. We don't watch, I mean, we're all scattered. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a different time, but uh, do, do, do I miss it? Yeah. Not really. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it was then, you know. You go against a team like Ohio State that has so many new starters. Is there a temptation to kind of, kind of make a big hit early? Well, there's a temptation to want to make a big hit early in every game, you know. So uh, it does, doesn't have anything to do with, you know, what their experience is. It always, you know, you, 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 want, to, you want to make your hit as quick as you can. Bob, you, you've built this to be a, a huge recruiting weekend for you. Is it fair to say that a win makes a could, could make a bigger impression than a loss? I mean, well, always, you, yeah, of course. Win yeah, it more. definitely helps, you know, no no doubt. How, how difficult is it when you make a, a, a weekend that big and it's this big of a game, you've got more demands on you throughout the week? Incredibly difficult. Um, it's a lot to manage, a lot to, you know, to work through. 
but we have a big staff and everybody contributes and and uh you know you do the best you can with it but it's a it's a grind there, there's no doubt this a week where you i mean you mentioned it but you really do rely kind of on your staff guys behind the scenes a little bit more oh yeah something like this going on no no question everybody we may have to hire some extras this week truthfully so it's uh, for, for it, what purpose? I mean, what, what, just to manage the, the number of people that are going to be here that we're recruiting, you know, uh, officially, unofficially, families. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot. Who would you hire? I mean, that seems like a fairly important job. job. You wouldn't just take well, somebody off the street. I mean, no, of course. It'd, it'd, have, it'd, be, it'd be someone in our, you know, in our, in our academic offices or someone, uh, you, someone with the university. Generally doesn't do that. Right. Though. Somebody in admissions or in, you know, whatever. Is it, I mean, for you personally, I mean, it's a Saturday night game. Does that make it to where you have more responsibilities on a, on a Saturday, just meeting people, meeting families? No question. Yeah, it, it's a... Uh, yeah, all of that will be happening. You just kind of sit in your office and people just kind of flood in and out for most part for on that. Yeah, yeah, we have it timed out of when and where and when they can get there. It, you know, it's so you work through all of that. Obviously, mm -hmm. you have to do that. But would you prefer not to deal with that on game days? I probably don't need to. Answer. I can't be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, I don't lie. So. <laughs> You, uh, you I, I say that kiddingly because no, it, it is you know it's part of the job you know and it, this is a big attraction, you know the our fan base, the stadium, the games, so you just gotta you know so yeah it'd be easier not to not to have to deal with it but you know it, but but also the experience of it you need to you know they want to be a part of it and you have to manage it that way. You talked about the OSU uh, situation earlier. Obscure rules, do you ever give a rule book some grad assistants and say, hey, look at this, I mean, to try to find something maybe you didn't know about a rule or something out there, just, I mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, as well as, you know, as well as I try and every year they give you changes or modifications and you read through them a couple of times to hopefully you, you retain it, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a big book to, to retain so kind of on that topic I'm, I assume it'll be a Big Ten crew Saturday night is this sport getting big enough to where maybe there shouldn't be conference officials there should just be kind of one pool I would I would agree with that you know to, to just have a pool of officials uh, yeah in in not really have an allegiance to one conference or the other you would think you know the, the way as big as college football is now, that we could work towards that. Maybe they are. I don't. I don't know. What do you think, uh, about, a, what do you, what do you think about a, a centralized replay system, like some of the conferences are going to? Uh, like the NBA has, I guess. I guess. I guess it'd be all right. I don't. You know. I don't really. Take it out of the hands of people sitting here watching the game. I don't know. I. I. I don't. I kind of. I don't have too much of a problem the way it's it's going right now. Uh, but after dropping that first game, what would a, a win do to the program? Well, obviously, it'd be a huge boost, you know, to you know to be heading into you know Big 12 play next, uh, you know, the following week. So it it always a big big boost when you can win a game like this. Why is it your policy to not talk about players' suspensions? Uh, just because uh, it doesn't need to be detailed. Their, their privacy is more important than at 17, 18, 19 years old than you or anyone else writing about them and making it public. Well, I think people ask so much because, you know, the Jordan Thomas stuff happened and people pointed to your history with suspensions that, that you took care of that stuff. And, you know, with Joe Mixon, I think a lot of people pointed out your history there, but I think people look at it as a ding that you waited till the second game to, to suspend people. Well, that that's okay. I've been dinged plenty. But you, I mean, you don't care if that that hurts your reputation as far as being a disciplinarian. I care more about my players' reputation and 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 what's right and wrong for them. 
So just to clarify, after the game, you said that the, the decision to suspend them was made last week, and then you just said it was a year-long process. So well, again, it, it, there's different reasons for different people, and I don't detail those. So okay, but which one was it? I, I'm not, I don't need to say which one was made last week and which one was a year-long process. Bob, silly question, but your alternative uniform, will you be, would you be less likely to trot it out when you're going to go play another iconic uniform like Ohio State? That would be fair to say. Do you get a charge out of the, will you get a charge out of the landscape Saturday night? Just being a part of Oklahoma and Ohio State sharing a football field? I mean, it's, sure. It's pretty cool. I mean, that feels bit different than when you're playing Iowa State or Louisiana Monroe. Well, I wouldn't. I, I don't want to. I wouldn't name anyone else. But but it's always, you know, when you're when you're playing in, you know, these kind of games, it's, you know, challenging and and exciting. We've seen more good matchups now um, than we have in recent years. You guys have been doing it for a while. You, you, do you think it's just when you're Oklahoma, Ohio State, USC, Notre Dame? Do you owe it? To the game to play these kind of games, these kind of matchups, because you are blue bloods. What you well, I, again, I think uh, our philosophy here with Joe and, and myself has been that that we we feel you know that with all the games you go back through our history, we've we've played about everybody, and and because we feel we owe it to our fans, and and we owe it to even to challenge ourselves, you know, that if you're going to be you know one of those top teams and you play other like top teams and uh, so we've done it through the years and and uh, for the most part it's been it's been positive definitely